Let's get this started. Uh, welcome everyone, as always. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a interesting time so far, uh, because I don't know if it's day, night, uh, afternoon or whatever, where you are. So I hope you could enjoy your time so far. Um, and today um, short recap yesterday we had a brief really brief I mean in one hour it's just impossible to do everything uh, but a brief um, overview on con coin voting so we skimmed through the um, ideas for Argon or the uh, voting theories explained by Pietro Speroni which was which is again a must view in my opinion if uh, of course, the topic interests you. Uh, we looked into the Liquid Democracy article by Dom and also Moving Beyond Coin Voting Governance by Vitalik Buterin. Um, again, it it is not extensive. It is skimming through the documents, uh, taking some highlights um, and um, trying to uh, together think about these kind of uh, topics and these kind of uh, points. Uh, today we're going to look into Polkadot a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, one hour might not be enough, but I hope that we can see uh, enough about it and try to understand what it is about. Okay, it's not about learning and understanding uh, Polkadot governance through and through. It's about understanding the mechanisms, the patterns, the ideas behind it, and um, to get a grasp of what is possible and what have been done before. Again, um, we are all students here, so we are learning from others' uh, experience. We are trying to bring that um, into our needs and try to figure out if, if that might also work for us or what might not work because I mean they already tried it and they figured out that there might be some things um, that do not really work as expected or probably are made like that by design so um, that might be also one point um, there that what we might see as a flaw might actually be uh, how is it called? It's not a bug, it's a feature. So <laughs> let's get this started with a walkthrough of Polkadot's governance. This is from 2019, so it's already almost three years old uh, in one month. Happy birthday. Um, so what is the idea here, uh, more or less? They started in 2019 with already a cutting-edge governance model. All right, the goal were, was here to make it possible uh, for um, contributors, uh, for um, core developers, if we want to take it like that, and for token holders to engage in such a way that they could participate in a distributed global governance. And this is something that is not as easy as it might look like, because again, as we might have seen yesterday, um, if we are, we are talking about a small group, around five people, uh, consensus is reachable. Between five and 50, we are talking about um, um what was the word again oh, i'm so bad today um if someone wants to help me out so one was consensus and the other was let's see who's just jumping in all right let me search for it again consent thank you um so one was consensus uh, uh, between six and fifty we're talking about consent and here of course when we talk about the decentralized or distributed global governance well both might not work or not be enough and even here uh, here even more so we're talking about uh, token driven governance and so you we have to think about or i'd say they had to think about uh, different mechanisms to make it possible um, to make sure that those people that have strong opinions are uh, a closer part of the 
um, on, on the governance, so to build, uh, let's say, a kind of council, but still to make it possible for everyone to, um, to contribute and to come forward with a proposal. And last but not least, and this is also something that we had as a question during last Friday's uh, Twitter space, they also thought about some kind of emergency procedure so that if there is something to be decided pretty quickly, uh, there is also there already a defined procedure about how to, uh, to do so. So um, governance one-on-one, -on -one, all right, so what does it mean? Well, Wikipedia defines it as the way of uh, the way rules, norms and actions are structured, sustained, regulated and held accountable. While the United Nations says governance has been defined as the rules of the political system to solve conflicts between actors and adopt decision. So let's say that it is about, okay, um, how do we do this when there is something to decide? Well, um, common factors uh, are a system of rules. So beforehand, it is decided how things work, how, um, how to have exceptions, how to have rules, how to set up everything that it works in such a way that it supports what we know of. Because of course, there might be some uh, unknowns. There might be some things that will or might come up later just after uh, some experience or um, after some iterations. And we will see that also Polkadot's governance changed with time. So it's not like it is fixed. It is, there is always a period where um, the, the system, the DAO, the, 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 the actions have to be tested and verified reiterated and changed if necessary. Um, then another common factor is, okay, we have to take decisions. So how, to we, how do we make decisions within uh, this governance system? And how can we hold participants accountable? Because of course, as we um, heard yesterday, um, the participants um, should not, let's say, take voting lightly and uh, vote for something um, that might, let's say, jeopardize the protocol or the system or the project by itself. And this is where Polkadot's governance um, made it really interesting. So um, again, I'm just skimming through it. I'm really not going too deep into it. Take your time to, to study it if it makes you curious, if it stimulates your curiosity. So who are the participants? Well, first and foremost, dot holders. Dot are the Polka dot tokens. So this is what is at the heart of um, Polka dot's governance. So it is pretty easy to do so as people vote with their tokens and increase their weight by locking up um, their dots for extended periods of time. So before voting, you just lock them up or during voting, you lock them up and you keep them locked to gain more and more voting power. Also called weight. So this already gives us some insights or ideas that, of course, in this case, your um, holding of tokens is not just an investment or a short-time investment if you want to participate in the in the governance of course so also here they try to um to leverage this idea of having skin in the game of holding tokens not just for the investment but for um to show belief uh, in the project to show how important it is uh, for the participants to hold these tokens and what they can do here is propose a public referendum, prioritize a public referenda, vote on all of active referenda, vote for council members and become a council member. So this is what token holders can do with time, of course, um, defined uh, by certain rules.
and let's uh, go a little further here um all right then uh yes of course validators i mean they have a proof of stake system so it's pretty much clear so they have this council all right vote for council members and become a council member and a council is um also here um let's say a, a closer group of members all right so they will gain prioritized voting rights over the network and um, will be elected with the ambition of proposing sensible referenda. So here, um, what is important for them, of course, is expertise and experience in developing, maintaining and using decentralized networks. So here, let's say that um, yeah. Uh, the goal here is not to just enable everyone, uh, of course, you can, but there is a preference. Because, of course, um, as we have uh, seen also in, in, previous, um, in previous sessions, it's not like being part of a DAO or participating in governance uh, should be enabled to everyone. I mean, I would not put myself as a decision maker around protocol decisions about opcodes, about switching from an account system to a UTXO system or whatever um, our engineering team is coming forward with. would not make sense because I do not have the um, a deep enough understanding. And this makes totally sense. This is, I mean, again, we have to keep in mind that Adao is there to achieve a goal, to have a mission. And this is what is important. Yes, uh, it would be great to have a perfect democracy, but that also would mean that everyone that is involved has to have the ability to um, be informed and also to understand what they are um, voting upon. And again, delegation and such, all right? We, we might have seen that before. So this is really, really an important point. Uh, a DAO does not mean that uh, it is uh, completely decentralized and, and ruleless and uh, anar anarchic, but it means that the structure of the organization is decentralized, is transparent, and is leveraging, leveraging uh, blockchain technology, all right? So... Uh, they are using it as a tool to keep this transparency, to use these um, tokens um, for voting and to use addresses as identity, for example, instead of doing KYC and such. So they have here, they explain how they do the, the council election, right? So after 20, uh, 12 weeks and then after 24 weeks, they become 12 and so on and so forth. And here is how they um, vote and uh, approve the council or they change it and here they explain it uh, in depth but this is not what we are uh, looking for because of course this can be of inspiration so if you're interested to understand how this works please go um, deep into that but again this is one concept this is how polka does it and it's interesting to know that but let's not get lost in in the details because otherwise we might be here for another five days just talking about this so um what is a referenda so every change to polkadot itself takes form the form of a referendum so they have um crucial functions uh, of, where they can actually change any aspect of the system so they can rewrite their own um their own thing and say okay from tomorrow we start using the tangle instead of a blockchain for example and I hope that the one that writes the referendum really knows what he's talking about. So here it is explained. Who, uh, as you can see, it is a through and through document walkthrough that explains every single point and how they defined it and how they think about it. And they might already have discussed it before. So they have uh, also their governance forum, probably, where they started doing a proposal. Um, I'm not going to compare it to Polkadot's uh, um, 
um, governance uh, model and thoughts and discussion, but it works more or less like this. So there is one person that starts with a uh, draft, a proposal, an idea. Okay, hey, I th propose that we do life cycle of governance like this and explains all the points, what he thinks is important from his experience, what he thinks is uh, how it should work, and then you start discussing it. All right. So of course you can you can have a more uh, a more dynamic and quick discussion in Discord, but it is important to have this thoughtful and um, lay out um, as many thoughts and as many critiques critique points in an elo eloquent way so that you can further discuss and build upon it all right um, of course I mean there is pro and contra so there is no um, no question about that um, the thing is also that in the end it's not um, it's not only about uh, listening to the to the positive voices but also to understand what the critique points are to um, flesh out a, a, as good as possible proposal as, which can be done with the people that are contributing so of course if it's just three people contributing well they might use the the, the the ideas of three people if we have a hundred people of course there might be a hundred people and uh, the more there are um, the um, the better it might come out the the hardest part is actually to not stay um, to, to not halt somewhere because uh, you get stuck because sometimes there are discussions with just get stuck and the idea here is not to um, have two uh, opposing um, parties but to find consensus to move forward because again governance is about pushing the project forward not pointing out flaws but looking for solutions so um, this is a really simple proposal from my side uh, I'm doing some advertising for our governance forum and at this point of the of the presentation so yes this is a really simple idea so how to implement um, ecosystem news in the iota discord uh, with some criteria some examples uh, how it would be implemented um, how it would look like a pilot phase filtering everything that came up uh, in my mind where i said okay this might be how i would propose it and I give it up to the community, to the ecosystem to discuss it and refine it and find flaws and try to make it as, um, as good as possible with our opportunities and with our possibilities. And so here I have the idea of uh, doing a council setup. Well, the question is, how do we vote for these people? Yada, yada, yada. And today I added a paragraph about authority because, of course, um, being a DAO uh, doing something does not mean that there is no authority that has to be respected. Does not mean that everything is anarchy and uh, everything is possible, right? There is some authority, there are some people that are um, responsible for things happening. And also here, uh, of course, this idea is for the IOTA Discord, but it can become um, uh, an initiative, a, a setup a way of doing things that might be picked up by anybody else and they might set up their own discord where they start listing all projects based on their own criteria and also there there might be an administrator uh, might be someone responsible for the server which might need some kind of kill switch to, to just stop the initiative and figure out what's working and what not so you start discussing it and once you are at a point where um, the people involved are satisfied, you publish it as um, um, as such as an article, or you you go through a referendum or whatever, so that you get um, backing from the community and so on and so forth. So how does um, Polkadot 
go here with who can propose it well uh, the council by unanimously uh, unanimosity so the whole council might sit there and say hey uh, this is our next proposal uh, let's say for iota uh, or let's say for shimmer it might be okay uh, the core developer are part of the council and they unanimously uh, propose the idea of the token factory and put that up to vote uh, there might be a majority council so there might be someone saying hey let's support um, instead of EVM we want to support uh, the Tezos um, smart contracts uh, infrastructure or logic where they use uh, a different programming language so instead of solidity they use if I remember correctly uh, it should be Mikkelson which is um, a dialect of Okamo, which is a functional programming system. And we want to do that, but only the majority of the council wants to do that and not everyone. So this is another way of uh, proposing uh, a referendum or of course, someone from the public does it. So here, um, really important a public referenda can be proposed by any holder and seconded so um, let's say they, it can gain weight from uh, other holders and there might be of course the issue of spam so they prioritize the greatest stake weight behind it and we might go into this a little uh, deeper in the next uh, section where we see how they are going to do that. And then they have the different voting mechanisms. So adaptive quorum biasing, um, then yes, yeah, easy, come on. Then they have um, also here a delayed enactment. So they not, they give the, I think it's 28, 28 days or something. Um, so, Da, 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 must be agreed upon using the standard curve and this is to mitigate attacks by malicious or ill-conceived proposals and here's the late enactment where it has to go through a certain amount of time which is not specified in this section which I think uh, should be around 28 days and so there is the opportunity and here it is where and why the delayed enactment makes sense where people have the opportunity to just leave the network all right so if you are not agreeing with something if you're not agreeing with what is being proposed you still have 28 days um, to sell your tokens uh, before the upgrade or the fork happens or whatever might might happen So here, of course, they have to keep in mind of the impact that every decision will have on the health of the entire Polkadot network. So this is the biggest, biggest challenge uh, right there. So they have here also the concept of lock vote multiplying and time lock voting. So they have the amount and how much time and you get a kind of multiplier uh, the more weeks you hold your uh, tokens staked or locked in this case I'm sorry yes locked so after more than one year um, one twelve yeah one year and three months you have the maximum possible um, voting weight so here you see the whole mechanism, how it works. Um, again, uh, they, this is how they uh, proposed it in 2019. And here they explain how, um, how to participate and such. So this is how they defined it back in the day. When we now go into their um, governance uh, wiki page, you might see some things which are really important, which is, I think, this box here. And here is where they are warning people that there is actually a um, change in governance. So as I was mentioning before, 
um, there are iterations. So governance is not something that is uh, fixed and uh, and defined forever. But it's something that might change because, of course, things are tried out, things are verified, things might not work as expected. Um, there m might be the need for changes, and so you just do it. It's not um, you should the the DAO, the governance, the the people behind the project should not fear change. They should embrace it. And those that do not like the changes and as harsh as it sounds. They can leave. There's, you know, there's nothing bad. There's nothing wrong with leaving a project you do not feel aligned with. Um, as I mentioned before, open source projects they fork. All right. If there is, uh, if there are really strong opinions which diverge within a project where there is open source, where everything is open and, and licensed in such a way that you can reuse it. And um, you have the, the power, the manpower, the, the support by a strong part of the community to just fork it and go your own way. Well, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, the challenge with cryptocurrency projects is, um, as we have seen, the uh, risk uh, connected to such a fork so um, there might be not enough people believing in it uh, there might be a huge crash uh, and therefore the people that are leaving that are um, let's say not um, not following the, the the governance decision and are disagreeing they have two options either they disagree and commit and continue working on uh, towards the, the goal the mission or they can sell or they can fork and keep the both tokens and hope to make it better than the let's say uh, original uh, version uh, and go their own way there's nothing really nothing wrong with that and it sounds harsh and it is harsh but it's just how open source works. It's part of the culture of open source software. And it's um, it's more critical for, let's say, the, um, the economic side of things and probably more critical for those that are not used to it. But it is something that happens all the time. It happened all the time. If we think about it, uh, if we might, might we do a comparison here? Uh, we did LibreOffice and OpenOffice already, but there was own cloud and next cloud, uh, which did exactly the same. So there are two projects on cloud. Does it still exist? Yes, it still exists where they started, I think, doing more uh, a more commercial um, um they started following a more commercial uh path and people said no hey you know what uh fuck it uh, and excuse my french we don't want to do that we want to keep it open we want to keep it as free as possible and so they forked it and they launched next cloud and it is the same coin base uh, code base it is the same code base up to a certain point of course up to the uh, up to the fork and then they went their own way so you have two projects which started as one and they forked and they went their own way and it is still here it is still working they are doing their own stuff and it's just how it is and this is more for people that look at it from the outside that let's say ignore um, these these opportunities you know ignore these um, these mechanisms of open source software that are scared by it but it's understandable I mean hello it's you know it's an investment um, on the uh, maybe financial side, but of course on the 
on uh, your reputation and some also invest money into it. And that is a really strong bond to one project or the other. But really to be true, there is nothing wrong with, with forking a project, in my opinion. So uh, here we go back to uh, how they describe the governance. So they have here again the referenda. We've seen that. Uh, the other article is from 2019. And here we see oh, uh, an addition. So there is not only the, um, the public and the um, the, the, the majority or unanimous submission by the council. There is a part of enactment of a prior referendum. This is an addition and also this one. So, you know, they changed, they couldn't change the, the blog post because, uh, you know, uh, it, people that read it before might not go and read it again after two or three years. So um, you do it where the documentation sits. And there is where they added these two points. And there is, again, really, really nothing wrong with that. Because that's how things work. Things have to be added and fixed when there is something that does not work. And so they said, hey, we need this process where there is an emergency proposal by a technical committee and approved by the council. So you have the opportunity here um, the, the opportunity here to have a technical committee which says, hey, there is a bug fix, there is something that does not work, some kind of um, inflation bug or whatever, and we really need to change this. So we propose a solution. The council approves that and that is, I think, and as, as far as I understood, the only time where there can be two referendum at the same time. So here is the, how it works, um, how it works with the weights, um, how it works uh, with the uh, council referenda and um, uh, how it is with the anonymous council, or with the majority of council, voting timetables. So they explain here exactly how many days it is. So there is every 28 days is when a new referendum can and will come up for a vote. So there is one referendum at a time. Um, and it is chosen between um, top proposals in the two queues. So one is the council approved and one is the public submit proposals. And so the top one is determined uh, by the amount of stake bonded behind it. So people have to stake for the proposal. And here is where it sounds, um, it, it starts, you know, to, to show something uh, something starts smell to smell fishy. All right, because I mean, um, how is a newcomer? Can you do that? Either you convince the whales with a really well written proposal, or it might be really hard to get enough stake bonded behind. But let's see that afterwards. Um, so here it is explained, okay, how it works. So we're not really going through the video. Here this is, um, this is where the weight is really important and gives um, importance. Um, and I will say that this is more of a way of doing um, token, lock TVL, TLV, TVL, total locked value. So this is where um, they use these mechanisms in governance to make sure that the dot holders uh, hold strongly to their tokens because so they have more to say um, within the governance systems 
and also so that they stake them uh, for other uh, important opportunities. And as you can see here, there is Peter that has only 10 dot, but he has them locked already since 128 weeks and his voting power is uh, actually stronger than Logan and Kevin that together have 35 uh, dots but even with their multipliers they just get up to 50 votes so even if they vote yes Peter here has more voting power uh, they explain it here with the I think it, it's in the voluntary locking yes here is where they define how the multiplier works so if, if I remember correctly this is uh, 28 days uh, so 24 periods so 24 times 28 days is what gives you the uh, no 32 times 28 days is what gives you the maximum uh, multiplier which is six and here they uh, discuss further points around it I'm not going too deep into that but it is interesting to see how actually um, believing yes it's about belief also but believing in what you do putting your money where your mouth is locking your tokens because you're not going to trade them in the short term so having this kind of long-term investment this kind of conviction towards the project um, gives you also more power which makes actually um, actually sense why not so here is how they do the telling and um, how the whole um, math behind works and here then they explain everything again i'm not going into that and here oh here is the voluntary locking so here is where the multiplier comes into and they explain then uh, the adaptive quorum biasing that they use as a concept which is um, a lever that the council can use to alter the effective supermajority required to make it easier or more difficult for a proposal to pass in the case that there is no clear majority of the voting power backing it or against it so they have this this uh, this lever where they can say okay if there is um, if there is a um, publicly submitted referendum with only 25% turnout with uh, enough I votes, it has to reach at least 66% for it to pass so that it can be applied. So here they apply the positive turnout bias. On the other hand, because of course, I mean, 25% of a whole network is not that much. All right, it's not really... Um, uh, let's say enough to uh, to to be sure that the people are um, are working let's say for the for the whole community it could be something that is really uh, important for a small part of the um, of the ecosystem and so they say okay it's okay well I mean it's it might be a really difficult decision or something that is really Mm, that is really important to not that many people because they might not understand it that it might be too technical or whatever and they say okay we accept a 25 percent turnout but it has to pass with at least uh, 66 um, percent of yes so it's not enough to have 51 percent uh, you have to reach 66 because there has to be at least um, two-thirds of the uh, voters that decide uh, for this uh, referendum on the other hand if we have 75 percent turnout which is three quarters of the whole network well it's enough to to um, reach 54 percent um, let's say confirmation to pass this um, and also the same works w with the negative uh, uh, turnout bias and so on then they have here um, what the council does so 
they represent, of course, stakeholders here. They do control the treasury, for example, and they um, propose sensible referenda, cancel uncontroversially dangerous or malicious referenda, and elect the technical committee. So they have really, really important job to do here. Um, sorry. Um, and here, of course, they explain everything. So here is the idea how to definitely uh, do this kind of governance in the Polkadot way. So this is their way. Okay, it works for them. It is uh, what they found as um, as best solution for uh, what they are looking for. And then we have here, all right, the blacklisting, how to be a council member, they explain everything. And this is the biggest challenge to make sure that everything is clear, that everything is um, defined and also having some kind of, um, of frequently asked questions and further resources. So as you can see, the, the hardest work within a governance system is to define how it works, to uh, make up the rules. And I mean, it can be something really, again, I'm going for mine because it's the one that I've wrote, so I know um, enough about it so that I can discuss it. So what it is about, what are criteria, um, how to include something, how to exclude something, some examples so that people can understand what is meant by it, how it is implemented technically, how it is um, implemented uh, in, in what kind of, uh, are there certain stages? Because of course, any initiative that you start, any proposal um, might have some stronger or less strong impact. And it is important to do it face by face to avoid uh, lack of interest, to avoid lack of interaction and such. And therefore you start with an MVP, with a pilot phase and see how it evolves from there because um, the importance is to give uh, the opportunity to the DAO members to contribute, to use their skill sets for the DAO to reach the mission and also to, um, to try out things because what might work for a project like IOTA might not work for a DAO, for example. And really lay out um, systems in place. This is, for example, a uh, security system or let's say a moderation system, which is automatic. And I explain here in layman terms. I'm going to share this also here in the DAO Pioneers channel, of course to have a look at it. It is something that is not that technical. So it's a um, really high level in the sense that um, it is really closer to the humans than to the technology uh, where people can start discussing and figuring out how, um, how to do something like this. And what m is missing, for example, is a um, more or better defined way of how to set up, come on, how to set up the council. I mean, all right, they are voted in by the community on Discord. Um, are they going to propose themselves? Are they going to be proposed from the community? Do they have to have a good track record? Do they have uh, to have rules like they have to be members for at least one year or something? These are all parameters that are still missing, which can be here uh, used also as a, let's say, um, sandbox for you, uh, which are listening uh, to uh, to these lessons, to try to participate in in a proposal. I mean, it's a discussion, right? It's it's a discussion phase. I uh, make this proposal, and now it will be really great to get some feedback and and uh, have contributors here participate in something that is not that technical in the end, because the goal here is in the end to make it possible for uh, projects which are building on IOTA Shimmerant Assembly to reach the uh, community on the IOTA Discord, lower fragmentation and enable the IOTA Discord to become a hub for project announcements and updates. So it's something that is not that technical, that can be, um, that can be discussed by everyone here, I think in the group because it's understanding how it works, figuring out how to 
uh, have this kind of council, how it should be applied, how do we vote for them, who votes for them. Do people need to have a certain NFT to participate? Yes, some kind of NFT. Do they have to have a certain amount of tokens because they have to be involved in this? Um, should they, I think I have it, uh, but I'm not sure. In the council, they we might to avoid conflict of interest. And so we might uh, have a rule that says, okay, if you are a council member and after um, th three weeks you start working for the IOTA content creator style, so you might be biased towards that. How do we remove you from the council? How do we make an emergency vote or a structured vote? Because it is something that just happens uh, because someone is moving forward in the ecosystem. And how do we do all these things? And I think this is something that everyone here can um, use some thoughts uh, or his experience or think about how they would like to do it and just reply to the discussion here uh, and uh, move things forward. And this is how it works, all right? It's people with the same mission, with an uh, idea, uh, proposing something so that they can work on it together and uh, make things a reality if they believe in it. So if you say, you know, uh, Tony, I like your initiative, might make sense, but I don't give um, two cents for this because it's not something that I'm looking forward to well. Just ignore it. It's not an issue. There will or might be someone that actually uh, wants to um, contribute and make it better. That, that's There's nothing wrong. It's not about everyone has to have an opinion. It's really not necessary. Okay. And if you don't like it, if, if, it's, um, if it's something that might work against the project, then you have to very well speak up. So if it's deleterious, if it's destroying if it's uh, working really against what your beliefs are and what uh, um, what you feel is uh, healthy for the project well then you have to speak up then it is your um, uh, as a governance participant it is um, your duty to speak up if you see something that goes against the mission for example on the other hand, if it's just something you do not want to spend thoughts on because it's just not interesting to you or you do not feel you're an expert, well, just let it go and let someone else do it. Uh, this is the beauty of, of an ecosystem of a, a DAO that people work on what they feel is important. And here then follows a, an article from last year, 2021. So it's two years after uh, the blog post, but it might be, let me check just to make sure. Uh, the PR here is from, from February 6th. So it predates the latest additions, the latest changes, but there are some interesting points here and an interesting analysis and I'm not going into it. Um, but all right, here is what an ideal governance process allows for so maximum participation, frictionlessness, um, and also here on chain governance will be more ideal seeing it as increases participation by keeping every governance action on the same dashboard that use for staking and transferring tokens. So for us, it would be uh, having every governance action on Firefly. Um, if we take uh, IOTA voting as an example. And of course, to reduce the friction between making proposals, debating them, voting in a referendum, and implementation of the outcome. So um, it is really hard, all right, uh, to find an ideal governance. But here um, he digs into it and takes it apart little by little um, and actually points out some probably some flaws which is not uh, which is not bad because it means that he has some kind of interest in uh, making it 
better or and point out some things that might not be um, as um, as uh, clear but I think um, it he points out to some really important points but the best thing is that in the end in the conclusion he defines it as one of the most robust uh, on-chain governance systems in the space right because it has different theories in its design and implementation so as you can see it's not something that you should take lightheartedly again we're talking here about a whole protocol so we're talking about a, a whole a blockchain uh, with uh, their tokens with the whole economy so it does not mean that you have to build a governance system with political science human psychology and economic theory into its design because your DAO might be 10 people all right but take into account that it is effort and it is important to structure it in such a way that it works for your DAO so take it as inspiration do not copy it because it might be really hard and because it might be uh, I don't know if there is this kind of saying in English, but it's like using a cannon to shoot pigeons. Um, so try to find inspiration from that, what might be interesting for your DAO, for your governance mechanism, and um, what to use and what not to use, for example. Um, we know that lately um, tokens and crypto tokens might be more or less seen as securities. So maybe you might not want to create your own tokens, but use existing tokens to do so, like for example, IOTA tokens, or uh, to use a person uh, voting. So one person, one vote instead of tokens um, to avoid some kind of legislative uh, issues, because you know, the not everything is clear. We are still, we're, um, we're still moving in a gray zone. Uh, with crypto and uh, regulation is coming so things might change and make sure to be prepared to change if necessary all right uh yeah uh, 50 minutes um straightforward i hope um it has been a little more interesting uh on the things i try to break it up a little bit more um any thing that you would like to contribute please just unmute yourself and and speak up um, because uh, any thoughts any things that you have seen also uh, exploring documents um before or um, also from other also from last week i mean it's uh, we are here to to learn together so please if there's anything you would like to add please feel free to do so right now Hi hey, Antonio, I've got a question. Hi, um, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, see, you've uh, spoken a lot about uh, Fernanda Council comes up with the proposals, it gets to the community and they vote on it. Um, in case of a, if a board goes as a yes, and that's fine, great, but th is there any provision or amendments to any proposals? I mean, after you launch uh, the the poll and you find that um, maybe the wording wasn't correct, maybe there was definitions not provided for people to actually vote properly, or if you actually have no for your proposal, do you investigate further? Why everyone vote would uh, make them vote yes? Uh, is there anything like that? Um, here, for example, uh, what Polkadot does is um, that they can cancel a proposal. Uh, wait, I zoomed out in too much. Uh, where, where is it now? Here. Oh, cancelling. So it is possible, for example, in Polkadot to, uh, for the technical committee to unanimously agree to cancel a proposal. So uh, they do it because of course if it is controversial um, then um, 
then it might be an issue here. And it, you know, it depends on how you set up the rules. So uh, it depends, I mean, what would be something where you decide within your governance uh, model to cancel something? Um, what, what, I mean, you, um, the idea here is to really define it in a document, in a uh, wiki, in a, um, uh, in a page where you describe how things work. So um, if you think that there might be the necessity for your um, organization, for your governance model to have this kind of uh, systems in place, then you should put it within the documentation already and think of, uh, let's say, the possible um, motives, the possible um, things that might require cancellation of a proposal. Mm -hmm. So as um, it might be a malicious uh, proposal, it might be jeopardizing your project, uh, it might be a proposal that um, after f further analysis, which might ha not have been done before because uh, people or um, let's say you made a proposal within 28 days, um, there is some kind of law in a country that um, makes what you are proposing illegal. Right. It sounds uh, far fetched, but it might happen. Well, in these kind of cases, you need some kind of cancellation um, agreement or cancellation definition, how this can happen. They also so, have blacklisting here, for example, where they say, OK, uh, this might be uh, re this might actually remove people from um, sending in further proposals, because uh, as also with DLTs, I mean, I'm sorry, just finishing the thought. Um, of course, it is easy when everyone agrees upon something uh, because everything is, is good and nice. But there are also malicious actors that might um, join the project to destroy it. I mean, uh, as uh, let's say paranoid as it might sound, but there uh, it is the Wild West out there and there are certain um, uh, ways of making a project unsuccessful and why not this might be one of them uh, so participating to jeopardize the project itself please go on uh, sorry for yeah, no. thanks thanks that's uh you addressed one part of the question the other question the other part was we have just given two options binary options yes and no um, sounds very primitive, you know, for any any voting. I mean, it's like black or white. It's like day or night. It's like male or female. We know that uh, the binary options don't always give the best outcome. Is there any initiative in the DAO space to actually um, improve uh, outcomes, not just keep them either a pass or a fail? That makes sense. Yes, the question makes totally sense. Um, let's say that this is more um, of a psychological way of how you put the question. So uh, I absolutely agree that there is no black and white, but on a technical decision, you either implement the system or you don't. Either it is explained very well so that you can agree upon or it needs further discussion. So um, let's say we're not going to solve uh, democracy or um, our, our political systems in our countries using this kind of voting, but a proposal should, should be posed in such a way that either the majority agrees or they don't. So the discussion about how the question, uh, let's say how the proposal is written and how the questions are posed should lead towards a yes or no vote. So, unless um, you want other opportunities, but then you put that into your into your uh, proposal. So let's say, let's take in account our build or burn vote because it's pretty uh, recent. And I think it is a good, um, a good ground for discussion. Uh, IOTA, no, wait, it was uh, iotatreasury.org. All right. So we have either burn 
or build. These were the two options that came out from, uh, from the community. So either we burn them or we use them. Well, wouldn't it make more sense to have, for example, we take 50% to build, we take 25% to burn and we keep 25% for eventual people that come back to claim them. Yes, it would make sense. But then um, the proposal just would uh, just, of course, it's not that easy, but would have to be written in such a way that it comes so far that people um, support it. So um, as Polkadot poses it, they say every referendum gets an endorsing. So uh, if it's not endorsed by the people contributing to the governance, it has to be redone. It has to be discussed upon. Um, and so I I, I'm not going to have an answer, of course, for, for your question, because there is no perfect system out there. This is impossible. But I'm trying to guide you towards how they try to solve it and how they make it for yes or no. Because um, governance decisions should be really clear and should be easy to follow even um, in 10 years. You should be able to go back and understand why people voted yes or no instead of, of looking for um for for a more a complex um, answer to that does this make sense uh, to you yeah no that's great yeah thank you yeah so it's an area i think uh, for further investigation uh, def definitely um absolutely i mean ag again there is no absolute answer to this because uh, as we have seen in um uh, in the voting theory, for example, Condorcet voting, where you vote your um, preferred, um, let's say your preferred options uh, out of five, so you rate them from one to five, the ones that you prefer the most, is one way of uh, deciding on something or getting some kind of consent of, on a proposal, but you make it really complex. Because I have to understand five different options. I have to really grasp five different options and f understand for myself what is the po best possible option and vote on that. And what might be the next best one? Hmm, you know, and it is um, the risk here is also to overwhelm your, uh, your governance contributors with a lot and lot of work which they might not be able to do. Um, I'm now thinking, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm now uh, going on a tangent here, so just hold me back if I'm going too far. But um, when we think about uh, the crypto space, yes, there might be some whales out there that have millions and can spend their whole day on on, on, on a forum and, and understanding and discussing and, and studying uh, sociology and, psycho and psychology. But there might be people in your governance uh, council or in your in your project that also have a day job to sustain themselves and their families and are doing this uh, out of passion and contributing to your project out of passion. And they might spend one hour, three hours per week. And if I have to go through a whole um, proposal with five different options and find the best one for me, well, if I have three days, uh, three hours per week, I might invest my three hours in, in something different. And uh, it is easier for me to go through a proposal and say, okay, I'm for it or against it. It's, it's much more easy. Or uh, to get into discussion phase and say, hey guys, uh, this is not clear to me. Can we write it differently? Can, we, can you help me understand what you mean here? Um, and then I can be convinced to either again vote yes, or maybe I'm still convinced that no is the better option for myself. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree, agree. This is not a, a set of people working full time. Yeah. All right. I hope I, um, I hope I'm helping, <laughs> but again, it's, it's such a broad, uh, I mean, concept and voting as uh, voting theory as such. I mean, we have seen it, uh, you, you could spend, I think, a lifetime of research on that. Uh, 
So, um, yeah, I hope that at least some kind of direction was able uh, to be given here. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else would like to share, ask, contribute? I mean, this was a really go good contribute contribution and question. Thank you. All right. If not, then it is uh, eight minutes past. So let us wrap it up really quickly. We went through um, today's uh, governance um, resources. So yes, easy. Yeah, I, I'm almost done. So um, around uh, Polkadot governance, so how to participate in it and their wiki page. We have seen that they did some changes since 2019, which is a positive thing. We've seen that there is an um, article by uh, Gilbert Basset, which um, looks into them, their um, model um, in 2021. So it was two years after the first blog post, but uh, before the last changes and that it is really well structured. So again, um, the idea here is really to get a, a gist of what it means to do governance. It's not something to take lightheartedly. It's something to um, that needs a really thoughts, of course, depending on the uh, on the weight that it has on your project. And um, I also showed you our uh, governance forum with uh, my uh, with Philo's proposal, which is really important, which I invite you to have a look at, which explains how proposals uh, should li live on the IOTA governance uh, in the IOTA governance project. So this is really interesting to look into because Philo is my mentor around uh, DAOs. I'm learning from him mostly. And he does this uh, proposal about how um, uh, how the proposal process and life cycle should look like in the future for the IOTA governance. So have a look at it, read at it. If it's too much, uh, there is my, let's say, more, uh, <laughs> more, I'd say, uh, beginner's uh, <laughs> proposal or I don't like the word primitive, but it's not that complex, which is about how to um, how to share ecosystem news in IOTA Discord, which is one proposal that might come up in one or of your um, of your DAOs where someone comes up with their proposal and say, hey, how what do we think about this kind of idea that I had, which has this and this solution? Um, so. If you want to look into one or the other, feel free to do so and to comment on it and to take it apart, ask questions and discuss it and find uh, ways of uh, doing it better, of course, because that's the goal, uh, achieving the mission. So I thank all the participants. It was a real pleasure to have you with me. The voting is done, if I remember correctly. Uh, make sure to keep the tokens into the Firefly wallet to gain more and more weight. If this is how um, I remember correctly that it works. And we are interest, really curious to see how, um, how the vote will go. Uh, but I mean, I saw that we have um, around, I think, 17% participation, but over... 87% of um, for the option build, which uh, again compares a little bit to what Polkadot did. All right, they had a 25% turnover with 65% uh, uh, weight, and we have 17% with 88 or 80 something, 87% for build, which might be in the end a good equilibrium. Um, if we look at voting like Polkadot did it. I will have to tell this to Philo because I think it's also interesting to bring this uh, forward. All right. Um, thank you again for being with us today. Uh, we meet tomorrow, same time. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very much for joining. Goodbye, everyone.
Thanks. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye bye. Cheers.